This is an introduction to some of the basics of using Google Earth to understand the globe. We will cover basic zooming in and out, navigation, some of the overlays, and even measuring distances. Note that the controls cited in this tutorial are those four Windows Platform and Mouse Click. For other arrangements, please check your own platform. However, the display and functionalities should be the same no matter. To find the online version of Google Earth, you can just search for it. The center of your display is going to be a screen depicting a spatial or aerial view of the Earth from a camera distance indicated in the lower right corner. The lower right corner is also going to give you a scale as well as the latitude and longitude coordinates of the center of your display. As you mouse over the Earth, The latitude and longitude coordinates will change to the location you are pointing at. In the lower right corner, you will also see the plus and minus signs for zooming in and out. You can also shortcut the zooming function if you have a mouse scroll, in which case the zooming is going to be towards the direction where your mouse pointer is pointed at. Clicking singly on any recognizable location at that zoom distance can give you information. Click, hold, and dragging the globe. We'll spin it around so you can better center your area of interest.
if you have a middle mouse button or a scroll you can press down on and hold, you can rotate the camera, even flatten your view. You can reset by clicking on the compass icon in the lower right corner. Note that this reset only resets north, but not the angle at which you're pointing at. Let us now quickly take a look at the menus. There is an overall menu where you can change settings. There is, of course, a search function similar in use to how you use Google Maps as well. But let us now skip down to map style, which will give you the overlays. Depending on what you are looking for, and how you want to experience it, you can change the map style. which may change depending on how much you zoom in. Or even customize what is being displayed. For exploration in geography, you will also want to turn on grid lines. This will turn on the graphical representation of latitude lines and longitude lines. Let's explore how these display. As you move around, notice that going left and right, the indicators for longitude, in this case, Western longitudes, will move along with you. For example, the Yucatan Peninsula is approximately along the 90 west longitude line, along with the state of Mississippi, Illinois, or Ontario. The prime meridian or zero longitude is especially highlighted. Latitude lines are these ones crossing between left and right with zero latitude being the equator running through such countries, 
as Kenya or Indonesia. These lines above it are designated with N for northern latitudes or S for southern latitudes. Again, you can verify coordinates to understand By hovering your mouse over the place of interest and looking in the lower right hand corner. For example, Melbourne, Australia is approximately at 38 degrees south latitude and 145 degrees east longitude. Here is a quick quiz of your understanding. What capital city can be found near 34 degrees south and 58 degrees west? To find the answer, it is best if you first zoom out using either the minus button here or your scroll on your mouse. Then spin the globe around to the Western Hemisphere. to somewhere near the 60 west degree mark. Start zooming in for 58 degrees west. And then move down to the desired latitude. Now look for a capital city. In this case, the answer is Buenos Aires in Argentina. Let us now explore how to measure distances on the globe using the last menu option. Note that you can have Google Earth calculate the distance for you in multiple different units But for now, we will leave it automatic, which by default will start in kilometers. While in distance measuring mode, if you click hold or zoom, 
you can still navigate the globe. A single click this time puts down a pin marker to a location you want to calculate the distance from. As long as you don't single click again, you can continue your navigation. By placing a second pin, Google Earth will calculate the distance along the surface of the Earth between those two points. You can continue the navigation and add additional markers and the distance will be added to the total. If you misplaced any one of the markers, by pressing backspace, you can remove the last one. Notice that the distance will be subtracted. Note that the distance measurement tool provided by Google Earth only calculates the shortest distance on the globe between any two points. Because the Earth's surface is curved, this shortest distance might not be along the same latitude line. This difference is explained in another video on shortest distances along a globe. Make sure to review the parts of this video, but otherwise feel free to explore Google Earth for yourself to find interesting places even explore some of the cities close up as if you were flying over them. Have fun.